Hello, welcome to the Stuff Podcast. My name is Toby Shapshak, and I am talking to interesting people about interesting things. One of the words us consumers don't often use is the word risk, but it's something banks are obsessed with. I'm speaking to Emma Moore, who is the Chief Risk Officer for FNB. Thank you for having me. I mean, it's, it's not a phrase that, that consumers understand, but it is something that banks are obsessed with and should be because as smart as, as bankers are with technology innovation, so are the hackers, so are the fishers. You've got to be ahead of the curve of, you know, the smart bad people um, that consumers don't think about, right? Absolutely. Um, and I mean, we've seen that banks have actually largely become technology companies. Yes. Um, I mean, we actually are tech businesses that offer banking services. And so the whole landscape has evolved quite significantly, actually, because the kind of risks we think about now are risks that, you know, a long time ago, banks didn't think about. Cyber risk and AI yeah. and um, how you manage scale and all of these topics that actually relate to technology and change. I mean, I, I love to remember these things because it, it, it doesn't just show my age, um, unfortunately, but like how we've seen the upgrades in banking technology. When I was a kid and my first account was Bob at F and P or Barclays then F and P. There was one yeah, there was one a couple of blocks up the road from my house. And you had a book that had your account details written in it and if you lost your book you were in trouble. And then it upgraded to credit cards or checks, then credit cards and swiping credit cards, then, you know, using tap and go. But now we're in the stage where you know, the, the way we work, the things we do are so remarkably different to what they were five years ago. Five years ago, it was inconceivable that a bank wouldn't house its own servers in its building under machine gun and lock and key. Now, everybody operates in the cloud because it is better, it is more secure, and it is, you know, kind of where everything is going in the future. We have a tendency to think we've reached somewhere because we came from checks and paper-based books. But actually, modern banking is yet to come. Absolutely. And I mean, you talk about the last five years. Um, we've actually seen such a transition in what risk management means over the last couple of years. Um, and I think COVID actually exacerbated that because managing risks now is about being proactive, enabling business, finding solutions to very complex problems. Um, and a lot of the risks that we deal with are actually very intersectional in nature. I mean, COVID taught us that, you know, yeah. we were dealing with resilience and cost of living pressure and a whole bunch of risks that kind of came together um, in a context that we never could have dreamed of. Yeah. I mean, the thing I say about that is it accelerated change. People were afraid of, of internet banking. They were afraid of e-commerce. They were afraid of delivery apps. All of a sudden, they didn't have their grandkid or their kid to help them do it people overcame their fear and reluctance and it and it kick-started the delivery and e-commerce industries but what i also think it does is it reminds us that the the essence of humanity is our ability to survive that's exactly what we were designed by whatever or whoever to do we evolve we respond to the environment we become better you know we, we it's our nature to evolve we just kind of forget it sometimes Absolutely true. So again, you know, if you reflect on some of the new risks that we manage as, as banks, yeah. um, there's been such an evolution. You know, historically, banks managed financial risks, which were risks like credit and market risk. Um, and now there's actually a whole bunch of non-financial risks that have become critical risks for us to manage. You know, topics like climate, and that talks to what, you, what you're saying around our need to evolve and yeah. actually think about things that we never would have thought about years ago. I mean, I think, I think about it in terms of, so like, I remember getting an SMS not so long ago to verify my online transaction. Now it's all in the app. I much prefer that. I've been anti, you know, OTT or OTP over the air pins for as long as possible, because whenever I wrote about Brank, bank frauds or people getting hacked, it was always an inside job and it had to be at the bank and at, at the cell phone operator. Um, so I think in-app notifications is fantastic. Virtual credit cards, love it. Something happens, delete it, do a new one, no problem. 
So, so that's obviously another form of risk, right? But I prefer that. Yeah. So, I mean, what's actually interesting is these in-app experiences are much better experiences for our customers, and they actually help us manage our, our risks better. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'll give you, you've spoken about some examples, but, you know, if you think about the credit process, the credit yeah. application process as an example, a couple of years ago, if you wanted to take up a credit product, you'd have to drive to the branch, stand mm-hmm. in a queue, provide your documentation to show that you had an adequate source of income. Um, you know, you'd have to provide the bank with a whole bunch of documentation, go through a risk assessment, um, and a couple of days later, you'd get your credit. And now, if you log into the app, um, all the background stuff data happens. The data's there. The yeah. assessment is there because we actually have um, the data that shows us um, what we need to see. And sure. we pre-approve an offer and you exactly. can take up a, a credit product within a couple of clicks. Exactly. And, I, and I've tested that to see what it's like to get a new card or open a new account or and I've gone almost to the end of the process, and it's been hard, like painless in, in the nicest possible way. I mean, the other thing that I like is, is the new way that banks and banking apps use available other technologies, the fact that you can tap into the home affairs database and get a live picture. That's amazing to me. Yeah. That's new, current, available, modern technology in action. No, I mean, you talk about pinging home affairs. Um, again, you know, if you look at our obligation to perform a KYC process, know, know your customer process, yeah. um, we have an obligation as a financial institution to make sure um, that we have all the information about our customers. So, you know, you're letting me, who's really me, log back into my account. I'd have to have the passwords, etc. But that first step is, and I like that. Absolutely. But even for, you know, making sure that um, we protect <clears throat> against money laundering and terrorist financing. We have obligations. And so if we can identify a source of funds for a customer through our own data, ping home affairs to actually identify who the customer is, we can automatically yeah. um, update KYC information and refresh it in the background. Yeah, and then as you said, I mean, it actually assists us to mitigate against risks because you have a proper, proper audit trail um, you've got consistency, you've got everything recorded. Um, and so the value that we unlock, it really is a sweet spot where you yeah. actually unlock value for the customer and you assist in managing your risks better. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I suppose the, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the great thing about the way technology is evolving is that this is not the end. This is, it's, they're just going to be better solutions. What are some of the kinds of new technology solutions that you're starting to see because AI is going to supercharge what you can do, but it's also going to supercharge what the cyber criminals are going to try and do. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, AI, I don't think we can even begin yet to understand all the potential that it offers, Um, but we're already seeing incredible use cases for AI. So I'll give you a couple of examples. we have very powerful fraud detection models yes. um, that don't rely on human beings up front to actually navigate what's happening on account activity and identify if there is anything that flags as potentially fraudulent. And so these models run in the background and, I mean, they, they do a huge chunk of work in a very short space of time and they've actually managed to save our customers um, from fraudulent activities I mean, I, I remember my, my card got cloned once, like years ago, years ago. I think I told Chris the story as well. I was having a drink with a friend at the radium and he lived in Australia and I got an SMS and I was like, I didn't just buy that. And I phoned the bank and they stopped my card. And I mean, it's so long ago, you still phone the bank. Now you do it in the app. And it was just an SMS notification. He was a South African saying, I would never get that in Australia. And I remember having written a story years ago that like the, the, the metrics to tell if someone's credit card had been stolen were they, someone bought a pair of Nikes, an iPod, and <laughs> I, I can never remember the third thing, but like quick, instantly disposable, high value items or a plane ticket. And that, now that's like on super, super steroids. Like, and I've seen that. I've gotten like a pay my, a pay my website hosting fees with a US company in dollars. And I've gotten notifications saying, is this legit? 
do you want to approve this? And, th- and that's great. Like, the, I want my bank to do that. I want my bank to be smarter than the criminals. Yeah, the power of these models is immense. I mean, if you, again, think about kind of the broader financial crime landscape, the ability of AI to kind of navigate through a whole bunch of very complex information and actually come to an assessment and an output that an analyst can then go yeah. kind of check against um, is incredible. And I mean, you can literally work through thousands and thousands and thousands um, of assessments. I mean, specifically in risk, just if you think about how powerful AI can be in just monitoring and assessing and um, providing risk advice based yeah. on inputs that yeah. you give the tool, um, I think, you know, we really... I mean, I suppose, I mean, talking about non-financial risk, there's a war in Ukraine, there's a war in the Middle East, there's, you know, there's potentially more wars in the Middle East. All of this stuff suddenly has an impact on, you know, what, what the value of my investment will be, you know, and you guys sold it to me, so you guys are going to be on top of that. I mean, give you sleepless nights by any chance, Emma? I mean, it's just, it's so interesting because there are so many things yeah. to consider. Um, and so, uh, you know, as I said kind of at the beginning, the, the landscape has just changed so significantly. Uh, you know, if you think about one of the latest tools we've developed um, is a tool called Nav Earth, yes. which actually helps clients identify their carbon footprint um, and understand practical ways to I'm reduce that footprint. I'm too scared foot- to use footprint. it in case I'm just like <laughs> really poor, you know, I don't compost enough. So, but I mean, so these are the kind of things um, that that we are thinking about. Um, And as I said, it's kind of, you know, where a couple of different risks intersect. Um, So you talk about geopolitical risk um, and then the intersection with cyber risk, um, for example. That's really where where we are thinking about, um, you know, the complexity um, of the landscape that we navigate. But what are some of the biggest threats you see coming? What What are the things we need to start preparing ourselves for in the next near future? There really are a number of risks that we're thinking about that are new. Yeah. Um, and so we spoke about AI. Um, I think as much as we recognize the opportunity that AI unlocks, uh, we also recognize that it comes with a number of very real risks. Um, so, I mean, we can go into a whole conversation mm-hmm. around that, but, you know, the risks around misinformation and disinformation, um, the risks around potential for scams and fraudulent activity, um, through these deep fakes that can so easily fool people yeah. it's around bias. Um, so these are topics that we really need to be thinking about very carefully um, from an AI perspective. Um, and then there are, you know, a number of other risks that we're thinking so deeply about. Um, climate is one that we we spoke about. Cyber, cyber risk is another one. Um, risks around data and privacy. Um, I'm are a little really obsessive topical. about that myself. Yes. Yeah, we chatted briefly about that, but um, that's that's you know really topical for us. Um, and then we're constantly, obviously, thinking about conduct um, yeah. and 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 how we actually look after our customers. I mean, I, I, it's a, it's a fascinating thing because you know there's a, there's a, an easy assumption to make in life in general, but you know in in something digital like wow, look at where we've come from. This is amazing without going, hang on a second, this is just where we are. You know, this give us five, ten years, that's where we'll be. You know, I think about how, how, how things have evolved to the point where I no longer have an actual credit card. I mean, I only have it for one thing, and that's to get into the slow lounge. Uh, but I never use an actual physical credit card for anything else. And that didn't take long to happen. I don't have a wallet. You know, I just, I, and it's, it's not that I'm being, you know, cutting edge and trippy, you know, the edge of innovation. I'm, it's normal. It, we live in the normal world of digital wallets. It's just going to get better. Please tell me it's going to get better. No, I absolutely agree. I mean, that's, that's the movie we're in. Yeah. Well, let's hope it's a, it has a happy ending. <laughs> and it isn't, you know, Die Hard 4 where the baddies steal everyone's money. Thank you very much, Emma Moore, for enlightening us about the challenges of risk in a big bank. You've been watching Stuff's podcast. Thank you very much. My name is Toby Shapshak. 
Our executive director is Sally Hudson. Our producer is Kim Brown. Te Putali is our videographer. And Hans Baumgarten is the director of audio. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast or here on YouTube. Thank you very much. You can read more every day on stuff.co.za.